But how did a military brat from Florida wind up with her hands on all that weight? My parents did not know that I was selling all these pills. And I know my mom would have been pissed. As I'm running the club, there's a guy that keeps coming in um, consistently. I like how he keeps coming around. His name, Nick. Nick was very handsome. He was well-dressed. There's an attraction. Lady was doing well for herself. She had a club going on, and he liked what he saw. Me and Nick become very close. Everything is going right for Lady. Her hustles are hot. She's got a new man in the picture. How great would it be if this were her happy ending? Spoiler, it's not. We found out we were having a baby. I really wanted to have a baby, and I just felt like the baby was going to be cute. <laughs> and I was happy. During my pregnancy, I really tried to avoid those thoughts of leaving my son. That was too much to handle. But she's gonna have to handle a whole lot more than just the burden of leaving her baby. When I was shipping weed, I was making 22, 23,000 uh, shipment. Shortly after I have the baby, Nick just stops in front of me and gets in one knee. He goes, will you marry me? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> You know, me and Nick know that we have to have this wedding quickly because we don't know what my outcome is going to be, really. We flew everybody out. We have a wedding, do some VIP clubbing, and have a great time. I probably spend around twenty to $30,000. But but that happiness is short-lived. Nick started acting funny, he was acting different, acting distant. Um, and I just really wanted to know what was going on. So I decided to put a tracker on his car. So I follow him all the way up to Charlotte and he stops in front of a ATM. I can see that there's somebody in the passenger side and I go to see that he's with this girl. He looks back and sees that I'm right behind him. He kills off. So now we're in a high speed chase in the middle of downtown Charlotte. Girl, aren't you in enough trouble? Eventually he stops the car. I'm angry, I'm livid at this point, like, I don't care. I pull this girl out of the car and just start wailing on her. And he doesn't know what to do. He pulls off, I still got this girl, but he kind of runs me with the car. But how did a hustler sling enough crack to sink the Titanic? Well, my parents were very strict. And then when I got to my grandparents' house, it was just a free for all. I had eight aunts and uncles. The majority of them lived in the house. I never smoked anything. I never drank anything because I witnessed family members do it, and it was always negative outcomes. I was always around weed. I was eight, nine years old. I was watching them rolling up joints and stuff like that. I remember I was upstairs up in my grandparents' house and playing with my toys, playing fake football with my little men. And I remember Going downstairs, they were rolling up their stuff, and my grandmother says, oh man, he's down there smoking that again. So it's like, for me, it was a normal occurrence. I didn't want Daryl to sell drugs because I didn't want to see him get in trouble, but once I found out, I just didn't even bother asking him why. Just went with the flow, because I already knew he's hard-headed. So I was like, I'll show him how to do it the right way. I started asking Johnny more about crack. He was getting a small cap with crack in it for $3, and then coming back to our neighborhood and selling it for $20. i am like, I never want to see weed again. I'm going to start selling crack. A cap is a very small capsule that has sprinkles of crack in it, probably only like an inch big. And then you had like a red top on it, and that described what block was, was what. Fifth of Indiana might have been red tops. The next block over might have been green tops. In each bag, there used to be 12 caps in a bundle. I was going down there buying like five bundles at a time, something like that, when I first started. But how did 
Giannis go from Canadian Football League Rookie of the Year to MVP of the drug trade? My whole goal from playing sports as a kid was just to make it out. Coming from a family of nothing but pimps, players, hustlers, and drug dealers, I just wanted to be something in life for myself. But the way it worked out, watching the draft class that day, I didn't get drafted. You know, I was butt hurt. I felt I was better than a lot of them dudes. I was very sad. But then I got a call to go play in Canada. I went out one night, you know, we would party and hang out. And we would be out in these parties and clubs, and my teammates would be taking stuff called Molly. For those that don't know, Molly is ecstasy. Or if you're a science buff, MDMA. No matter what you call it, once it hits your body, you hide in God. And I ain't never trying hard drugs. So when I took the stuff, I went from being a wallflower, didn't know nobody, anti-social in a club, to now I'm hollering at every girl in a club. I said, I'm finna take this back to Oakland. I'm finna put this in America, and I'm gonna be the next American gangster. I felt like I was on top of the world. You couldn't stop me. I was making so much money, you couldn't tell me We were doing good. He wanted to buy a house. It was a three-story house with an elevator in it. They were building it from the ground up. So they told him 50000 and he came back the next day and brought him 50000 in cash. Her first taste of lawlessness happened before she was even old enough to drive in the Oklahoma trailer park of her childhood. My family wasn't normal. My mom sold drugs. My father was an alcoholic. My grandma cooked meth. I thought when your front door was shut, you were cooking drugs. Strangely enough, she enjoys life in prison way more than she ever did on the outside. Every single day, there was always lights, there was always water, there was always security there. I never had that. In a life that was uncontrollable, my life was controllable in there. For the next 15 years, Dusty was stuck in an endless loop of petty crime that got her short stints in the big house. So I wanted to be a part of the Irish mob because it was so fast and it was so glamorous. Like, it was bad. And I loved being bad. Dusty asks how she can get her own shamrock tattoo. You do whatever they tell you to do to earn it. And once you get that tattoo, there's only one way out. And that's six feet in the ground. It was the evening of July 4th, the morning of July 5th. And me and my friends had went to the chicken fights. We saw some fireworks. My friends took me home, dropped me off. When I was at home, I saw this Molotov cocktail get thrown against the window. I don't know who started the fire. I just saw the figure of the person that threw the Molotov cocktails. I just remember seeing the flames just like licking up the living room window. When the fire department got there, they couldn't put the flames out. And my friend that I went to the chicken fights with, he was parked right up the road. And I just walked over there and I remember sitting on the back of this tailgate with him. And I looked over him and I said, isn't that the most beautiful thing you've ever seen? And we just watched my house burn. 